Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is Sea Raptor, and we are long overdue to get some more battle reports posted onto the channel. And so today we're going to bring you one from the bridge, a tier 8 German battleship, battle cruiser, I don't know, this thing. This is Zeiten, or Zeiten, or I'm mispronouncing it, get over it. The German battlecruiser line has been in the game for, I don't know, six or eight months now, and they are unquestionably some of the most fun and enjoyable ships Wargaming has turned into the game in, well, quite some time. They're just fun to play. Yeah, they're a little soft for battleships, but the secondary power is crazy, the guns are fun, they tend to be fairly punchy, they've got torpedoes, they're quick, they've got hydro. There's a lot to like about this line. But Zeton here in the mid, well, not really the mid tiers, we're the kind of entry to the high tiers now at tier eight. Zeton is, <laughs> Zeton is the ugly duckling of this line, kids. Like, this is not even up for debate. This is unquestionably the, if not one of the ugliest ships in World of Warships. And I don't use that term lightly because, I mean, gosh, there are just a tremendous amount of stuff stunningly gorgeous ships in this game, right? The art department at St. Petersburg has just crushed it time and time and time again. Modeling ships in this game, they look gorgeous. Like anything designed by the Italians looks like an Armani suit, right? They're just, oh, battleships by Armani. But something about Zeton, this ship just looks horrible. It's like Somebody took a Nuremberg and smashed a Graf Space superstructure on it with Gneisenau turrets, sort of, and then, like, the hull is even a weird shape at the bow. Like, it is just, this whole ship is just bizarre. With that said, though, from a combat functionality perspective, combat effectiveness, Zeton is, in my opinion, where the line really starts to come together. It is one of the best ships you could be playing in ranked scenarios right now, tier eight, tier nine, um, just because of all the package it brings together. This game is about several, this game is several months old, but it's still an old Silver League game where I was playing tier eight and tier nine. And so we're going to showcase it here on the channel because if you're not playing either, either Zeton or her tier nine cousin, Prince Ruprecht in ranked in Silver League battles, honestly, you're missing out. This is some of the most fun you can have playing this game right now, in my opinion. Spawning here to the south side of Sleeping Giant on Ranked. This is always bound to be a lot of fun. We've seen, we've seen how crazy this map plays in competitive modes, right? In King of the Sea and whatnot. So here we are. I initially think, start out thinking I'm going to go over here to the, uh, the eastern flank, but very quickly decide that's not really useful. I mean, the Friesland, uh, excuse me, our Groningen, our Friesland basically, is doing a great job of scouting ahead, looking around, hasn't run into the other destroyer, whereas our Iger, you see there over on the two line, has just spotted him making a beeline into the A cap. In addition, if you look at the five line, there's a Zeton and a Palmer and in the middle of the board, they also seem like they're gonna go in to Thunderdome over there, gonna go into the A cap. So my presence here in this portion of the map is largely wasted. I need to be have my guns looking back towards mid for these battleships to beat them up a bit and potentially to move up there and have more of an impact on the game from there. These guys are making, honestly, the opposing team is doing something that I consider to be quite smart, and that is making a play for the A-cap heavy in this map format is a really good one, especially with a Zeton and a Palmer, right? Torpedo battleships with Hydro. If they can get into that cap, you know, getting them out, rooting them out of there will be very, very, very challenging, to say the least. So they're making a smart play, and we've got to try and deny it. I'm going to cut back here towards mid to get my guns to the center. But one of the things that you're going to notice about Zeton, right? She's got, what, 18 kilometers of range on the main battery, only six barrels on a 22-second reload, which is really sexy, by the way. But typically the guns, like, they're not always as accurate as you could wish. You'll fire six shells, you'll land two to three. Over the course of a game, that adds up because you're firing them every 22 seconds. But individual salvos will very commonly feel a little on the weak side compared to what you would wish for out of a traditional battleship. They now have a Zeton, and their Friesland is in the cap. I'm going to take this salvo to Friesland, hoping to finish him off. Our Iger is charging into that cap from the three line, going in on a 3v1. We really need to get this 
Friesland off the board, they do. That's a big kill. Unfortunately, it's about all that Iger's going to be able to accomplish before he's going to go out staring two battleships in the face. Palmer does make it in, but he's going to ground himself on the corpse of the this teammate right in front of him, the Friesland. His sinking hull right there just stops the ship dead. That's going to give me the opportunity to push up right up here in the middle of the board and get my secondaries into range. The opposing team has two Alaskas, and this is something that you're going to start to notice when you play these German battlecruisers, right? The AP that opposing ships fire at you commonly won't citadel you, but you will eat full pins for days. It makes fighting against enemy supercruisers like an Alaska, like, say, a Kronstadt or a Stalingrad, very challenging because if you show them enough angles, enough of an angle for their AP shells to bite, you will feel it. But if you can push in for them and let your secondaries get in on the action, start lighting some fires, chip away at their health, you'll find that you can usually win those engagements by just continuing to push and be a little aggressive or, depending on if they're pushing you, just sort of kiting them away. And you're going to see an example of that here in just a few minutes. Pomeran's in trouble. I'm trying to finish him off here, keeping, keeping him in range of my secondaries, ignoring the Alaska off my bow. I really want this kill, and we do get it. So there we go. We're up a ship, even though we've lost control of the ACAP. There's an Alaska and a Zeton on that side of the board. But now my team has sort of, well, for lack of a better way to put it, accidentally done something smart. And I'm going to pause the game here for just a moment because I want you to have a look at the mini-map. We only own the C-cap, right? So right now, we're up on ships, but we're down on points. But what's going to happen as my team converges into the middle of the board, we're going to be able to have... Uh, it flex our firepower basically anywhere we want on the map while the opposing team is basically going to get split into two or three elements that have a harder time bringing their firepower to bear because they're all spread out over the board, right? The Missouri's up there holding down the A cap. Oh, sorry, the C yeah, the A cap or the B cap. That's actually a really good place for him, but it does somewhat limit the amount of impact he can have on the game. This Alaska right in front of me, you can see him moving uh, a port to starboard here, is not in a bad position per se, but he is about to be caught out by an Alaska, a Marlboro, and myself, and even the Palmer. He's under a lot of focus fire. He's going to try and go be somewhere else. You can see what his AP is doing to me, though, even at the angles that I'm showing him. And then there's the other Alaska, who's basically clean, way over on the two line, trying to wrap around the bottom of the cap and become relevant in this battle. So in a very short amount of time, this Alaska's AP has really chunked me down. I'm now under 15,000 health. Uh, it's going to be a little bit for my heat before my heals come back. I do have two more, but it's going to limit my maximum health over the remainder of the game. So right now, I'm intentionally securing my main battery fire. I'm letting my secondaries chip away at him while I run away. I want to get out of this detection range of this guy, back off a bit, and, and give myself a breather, try and buy myself some time until my second heal comes up. Bad news for me is this Alaska pushing from the south means I really need to pitch in and try to help the Palmer. This is maybe an inadvisable salvo here. I really wanted to try and help the, the Palmer down south who's not looking so great. I do get some good, some good damage into him, but it was probably a bit of a risk that I shouldn't have taken. I get away with it because the Alaska and the Missouri off my port side way up on the B cap are behind an island for me now. They have no shots. The Zeton, the enemy Zeton I mean, still in the C cap. Uh, sorry, in the A-cap, not really able to shoot at me. I'm out of his hydro range, so if I wanted to stop shooting and go dark, I could. And that is exactly what's about to happen here as I pop my next heal. I secure the main battery. I'm getting my guns looking. I'm waiting to see if this opposing Zeton will come out of the cap. Right now, getting focused by a Marlboro and Alaska. He doesn't make it out of the cap. They do put him down. That gives us a two-ship lead, but more importantly, it frees up the A cap for us to send someone in there. And so now the enemy team is even more spread out, right? There's now two separate elements. You've got one way up north, one in the south uh, southwestern corner, and my team, myself, the Palmer, and the Alaska, the Marlboro, we own the center portion of this board. We're not going to go to the B cap. There's no reason or need for us to do that. But they are absolutely going to pick up A. The Palmer and I are in a position to keep the opposing team out of C. Married to our ship lead, things start to look a little more rosy. The other nice thing about putting a ship like a Zeton or a Palmer or something like that right in the middle of the map, you have more potential targets for your secondaries. The secondaries on these ships are absolutely worth 
making the effort to get them into range, either using them to kite, like what's about to happen to this Alaska as he pushes into the middle of the board, or possibly even using them to push. Zeton is not a great pushing ship. I wouldn't recommend it. Ruprecht would probably be better at it. Not only does she have more torpedoes, she has more forward guns. But Zeton here, just like Nuremberg with this tur turret arrangement, right? A fabulous kiter. And that's exactly what's about to happen to this Alaska in the southwestern corner of the map. He's going to try to push back in, and he's going to be dealing with me and the Palmer and our secondaries. Ten minutes to play, and things are looking good. We have only a 60-point lead, but we do have a two-ship lead. I'm, I'm still giving this guy just a little too much angle. These Alaska players on the opposing team know what they're about. They're firing mostly AP. That American 12-inch Super Heavy AP is really, really good. So, yeah, I mean, they're making the right decision on just managing to show him an angle or dodge shells at just the right time to keep my health pool still, still available and alive in this game. The Torpedo Salvo is speculative. I have no idea where he's going to be. But they aren't going to do me any good if I leave them in the tubes. They've got like a 12-kilometer range. Let's throw them out there and see what happens. And now between me and the Palmer, and this charging Alaska is in a bit of a pickle, right? We shaved off a good 10, 15,000 of his health. He was on two fires. He just had to repair them. Which means that if I can land a flood with this torpedo, it's going to stick. Unfortunately, doesn't happen. But it does take another chunk of his damage and another fire. He's going to go out right here for a high caliber and kill number two. At this point, the temp, my team has also cleaned up the Missouri. So, yeah, game's pretty much over. The last surviving Alaska is not going to be able to, to handle this. Handle, handle the win, right? He might bag a kill, might get some more damage, but in the end, he's not going to be able to salvage this game for his team. These German battlecruisers, despite the fact that they take such <laughs> heinously huge full-pin salvos when opponents shoot AP at you, they can, they can take a surprising amount of damage, a surprising amount of punishment, as long as you're able to you know, like manage the, the, the range of an engagement and also occasionally, as you saw me here do in the middle of the map, manage the stealth a little bit. They're really, really good ships in these 6v6 formats, right? I can't recommend them enough. If you're playing through bronze, I'm sorry, through bronze or silver or gold league right now, if you're playing ranked at all right now uh, in the summer of 22, and you're working on these ships, or you have one of these ships, they are just so, so good for, for the tier 8, 9 ranked. Because you can just, you can get away with shenanigans in these ships that you just can't get away with in a lot of others. My secondary damage total at the end of the game, if memory serves, is one of those eye-opening, wait, what just happened sort of things? Because, you know, this is only a... In-game, full game duration is only going to be about 12 minutes, I think. Um, and, uh, and my secondary damage, we'll look at it here as the screen comes up, is, um, basically 40,000, right? So, so here we go, guys. You know, that, that is just a nice, solid game, I think, that showcases Zeton. I've been wanting to bring this one to the channel for a while, and I've just been a little lazy about it. Um, as you look over the game results, though, what do you notice, right? For starters, um, a nice chunk of damage, three kills, chunk of fires, 173 shell hits. XP-wise, solid little game. Marlboro also had a great game. Basically, everybody contributed to this game. This is a nice team win. I ended up with some of these, more of these kills, I suppose, but I don't feel like anybody in that team didn't do their job, right? Like, that was a nice, solid team win in ranked. But when you look at the, 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 the third screen, the detailed report screen, this is where I want you to really kind of understand what Zeton is good at, or, or Ruprecht, for that matter, and what they do really well. One, look at what I did to these two Alaskas, right? Basically 60,000 damage a pop. A huge chunk of that damage coming on the back of the 40,000 secondary damage and the 13,000 damage I got out of fires. I think maybe a little bit of that fire damage came on the Palmer, but the bottom line is that both those Alaskas suffered heavily under my uh, secondary, secondary batteries, and of course I had the one torpedo hit. Um, but... But yeah, like if you invest in secondary builds on these ships, they are so, so good. You just have to learn to kind of manage the health pool a bit. And ranked is very forgiving because there's only six other ships that can be shooting at you at any time. That means that you can angle, you can dodge, you can look for places that they won't be able to spot you or whatever. And it just, it makes playing a ship that is this offensively capable, but perhaps a little defensively held back a little more enjoyable because you just you just 
Ugh, it's so good. You get to do all kinds of fun things. So I can't recommend this line enough if you're looking for ships to play in ranked right now. Anyway, guys, that's our quick battle report on Zeton. Hope you enjoyed that. Wash your hands. Be safe. I'll catch you next time.